When you get a spirit kit, you get all the parts. I mean, there's fittings for this and that, and uh, we just send you a whole roll of brick line. So it's kind of a do-it-yourself thing. Mm -hmm. But you'll need some basic tools, so here you go. All right. Show us some of them tools. Well, let's set this aside. First off, you need a cutter in order to cut your lengths. The best thing to do is measure out about what you're going to use. Cut a little bit extra because you can always cut back, but you can't yeah. add on the two. Start on one end, and when you get there with all your bends, you can cut the other end again. Exactly. All right, so you start with your uh, cutter there. Next, you have your clamp here that you put your different size tubing in to do your flares. Then you have your um, flaring, flaring tool. I flaring tool, flare, yeah. yeah. Which uh, one of the pieces is missing out of there. And uh, then you need your little setters here. And that goes inside. And what I'm going to do is show you how to use that. And this is what makes the double flare. You're, yes. crea you're creating one type of flare with this tool, and then you're going to set it with this one and make another flare. Um, if you would just use this, it would flare it, but it wouldn't be as strong. Right. And this is how you use your cutter. You tighten it up and spin it around. And I don't put a lot of pressure on that way. You don't smash your tubing on the inside, pinch it too tight. All right, what you want to do is after you cut it, you want to take your end and open it up to make sure that your little fitting, the pin will fit into that. That's a major deal you have to have there is that going in. And when you get your line cut before you flare it, I always take a file and make a chamfer around on the line itself. That way you get a nice, nice double flare. All right, then you'll loosen up your um, clamp here, put in for the size line that you're using, and on on all your um, little pin sets, there's a collar on the edge there. Set it, if you want to do a close-up on that, where the top of your line matches that widest groove there. And when you got that, that's the proper set height for doing it. Make sure that when you have your line in, very critical that these are good and tight. After you have that good and tight, then you take your pen you put inside there. Now you, um, there we go. And I went and found you a part. Oh, okay. If, if you don't have the right tool, get another tool. This slides over and you want to make sure that that cone is setting inside of the dished area of your pen. Okay, you want to make sure they're good and uh, straight with each other. Now then, you tighten them down. If you have a vise, that works really good in a vise. Right. But what you want to do is tighten it down where that is perfectly flat on top of the jaws there. And that you have to put a little bit of pressure on. Okay, now you, I'm stronger going one way than the other. Okay. Then you remove your, your pen out of the center hmm. and now Bob without breaking the pin I that 
the same issue every time I do it. Really? Now this is your your pen I'm using. Okay. All right. Now then, if you want to do a close up there, you'll see how it what it did. It pushed it down and flared it out and made it round looking. Next, you want to take and get the comb right dead center again in that. You want to make sure you have it even. Now, this part, you don't want to over tighten it uh, because if you over tighten it, you're going to push it out and make it look like a single flare. So just tighten it up a little bit, back it off. You don't have to torque it down like you did with the first step. Loosen your clamps and pull it out. And there you can see you've got a double flare. Then you can uh, put your tool on there and then you'll see that it's flared out all the way around and it's inverted tapered there so when it goes into the fitting you see the fitting that is flared then you've got a a nice leak free connection there and the next thing on the hey, here's a mistake that I make all okay. too often I should know better now I'm going to bend this thing around and I'm going to get it to where I want and I'm all excited it fits and I'm like I made my loop around the end and I'm ready to go. So I put it in my flaring tool and I get the thing and I put me a flare and I got my flare going on. Oh I'm you did done. remember to put your flare fitting oh, on. Oh dag gummit. Yeah see once you get the first <laughs> flare on you better put your second one on first and you then flare the right afterwards. Way. Yeah otherwise you're you're going to be cutting a little end off of there right. and reflaring. And as Bob demonstrated here, don't put it on this way. Oh, put sorry. it on that way so you can go into <laughs> Pay it. attention to what you're doing. Yeah, and it, believe me, I've done it. Everybody's done it more than once. You get in a hurry, you do the flare. Oh, I forgot to do it. Well, if you made it a little bit longer on one end and you're working from back to rear, you can cut the little flare off and put your fitting on. If you've already got everything measured and bent the way you want it, you're going to have to start from square one. Most of the tools actually even have a ridge in there that your flare will fit right into. Right. And you can cut just the flare off. See, they, they knew there was going to be people like <laughs> us. Like us. Yeah. yeah.